Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Anna Morfides with Mending Hearts Counseling and today is going to be the beginning of week two, week two of our 21 day healing our anxious attachment style uh, workshop and like I always say in every video, along with healing our anxious attachment style so we no longer feel the need to be uh, chasing, um, obsessing, um, ruminating, um, being anxious, insecure, all of these things that we acquired along with our insecure or anxious ambivalent attachment style, we're going to be letting it all go. And today is actually kind of a very special and very emotional day for me because my uh, both my children have now finished elementary so one graduated elementary last year one is graduating elementary this year and they're off to high school so i was a little bit um tearful saying goodbye to all of their teachers because i had been there for the last eight years and i just wanted to say that this shit of self-love and gratitude excuse my language works because I'll tell you when I started my journey at this elementary school I was not the same person that I was that I am today I was completely immersed into all of my wounds I was insecure I was um uh, not confident I was anxious I was um just not in a very good place actually. And I felt not included. I felt by the other moms, I felt judged. I felt lesser than, I felt all these things when um, I started my journey with my kids in elementary school. It kind of felt like high school a little bit over again. I'm not sure if there's any other moms that are watching uh, these videos or if you're like resonating with the fact that it's almost like you have to fit in all over again. And of course this, my kids started school before I had started my work because that was eight years ago and I started to do all this self-love and gratitude and meditations, mm, I'd say about six years ago. And let me tell you that I went from this um, really insecure mom that felt uh, judged and left out and not included and um, yeah, lesser than. I ended up becoming um, pack chair for my kids' school for the last three years. So pack chair, what's the acronym for pack? Parent Advis Advisory Council. So basically, I was like the face of the school and in charge of all the fundraising and all the activities and um, yeah, like in charge of so much. And there is no way I would have been able to be pack chair if I did not change internally who I thought and what I felt about myself, because how can that insecure little girl be someone who is like the face of the school and um, is, yeah, basically like, I don't want to say limelight, but you're in the line of fire to be um, like judged or talked about or criticized, right? Because you're taking on this big role so me exposing myself in this big role, like that was a really big deal because I already felt these things from within. But now we know that only one can only judge us to the extent that we judge ourselves. One can only criticize us to the extent that we criticize ourselves. One can only love us to the extent that we love ourselves. So it goes like this. So the more self-love and gratitude you give to yourself, the more you're going to experience it from your outside world. And I can't even believe it. Like I literally went from being not included to like being included in everything and uh, people saying like the nicest of things to me. Like I can't even believe words that people use to describe me because it's not what I ever heard in my life before but i've been doing this work so my program is now bringing in how it actually truly feels about itself from the inside like how beautiful is that never would i ever thought in a million years so please don't give up keep going with this work i swear to you it works okay so without further ado we're gonna 
go into our gratitude with Rhonda. With Rhonda B, the author of The Secret, and this is her sequel, The Magic. I know The Secret was basically like a straight up read and it was basically teaching us about what the secret is. The secret is the more we're grateful about what we have now, the more the universe will reward us for the gratitude that we have for the now. So predominantly, we want to be grateful for things that are existed in our life and not be jealous or wishing for things to be different. That doesn't mean that we don't want to acquire things or have dreams and goals and yeah, wish to have more, but you have to be grateful or the way to get there is to be grateful for things that you have now and then feel good about your now. So then more feeling good things can come to you so you can progress to your future. So day number eight of the book, The Magic is called The Magic Ingredient. A thankful heart hath a continual feast. So yeah, I guess kind of ties in with what we were just saying, like the more grateful you are for things right now, um, the more, and you feel good, right? Because gratitude makes you feel good. Oh, I'm so grateful for the clothes that I have, even if it's just like a few clothes that you have, or I'm so grateful for the house that I live in, even if it's not in the most, um, like in an, in a spot that is not like, I don't love this the spot that where my house is at right now. I would have I would have loved it if it was like closer to my children's school so they can walk back and forth. But that's like super minor detail. But that thought sometimes will pop into my mind. I was like, oh, I wish we were closer to the kids' school. And it's like, no, no. I'm just so grateful that we have a roof over our head. And then I just allow myself to think different thoughts as opposed to feeling bad about what I don't have. That's just like a silly little example. Um, and I shouldn't say silly. Nothing's ever really silly. Okay. So giving thanks for food before you eat it is a tradition that has been followed for thousands of years, dating back to the ancient Egyptians with the fast pace of life in the 21st century, taking the time to give thanks for a meal has more often than not been left behind. But using the simple act of eating and drinking as an opportunity to be grateful will increase the magic in your life exponentially. If you think about a time when you were really hungry, you will remember that you could not think or function normally, your body felt weak, you might have started to tremble, your mind became confused, and your feelings plummeted. All of this can happen after not eating for just a few hours. You need food to live, to think, and to feel good, and so there is a great deal to be grateful for about food. To feel even more gratitude for food, take a moment to think about all the people who contributed to you having food to eat. For you to eat fresh fruit and vegetables, the growers had to plant and nurture the fruit and the vegetables with continuous watering, protecting them from many moths until they were ready for harvesting. Then there are the pickers, the packers, the distributors, and the transportation people who drive enormous distances day and night. All of them working together in perfect harmony to ensure that every fruit and vegetable is delivered fresh to you and is available year round. Think about the meat growers and the fishermen and the dairy farmers, coffee and tea growers and all the packaged food companies who work tirelessly to produce the food that we eat. The world's food production is a breathtaking orchestration that takes place every day and it's unfathomable that it all works when you think about the number of people involved in maintaining the world's food and drink supplies to stores, restaurants, supermarkets, cafes, airplanes, schools, hospitals, and every home on the planet. Wow, I had totally forgot about this. Yes, that it truly is a gift. So it, it's a gift of nature because there would be nothing for any of us to eat if nature didn't supply us with the soil and the nutrients and the water and the food to grow. Without wa water, there would be no food or vegetation or animals or human life. We use water to cook our meals, grow our food, maintain our garden, supply our bathrooms. And water keeps our bodies alive. Water, water, glorious water, she says. If there is magic on this planet, it is maintained. Sorry, if there is magic on this planet, it is contained in water. There's a quote written by an anthropologist, a natural science writer. So where would we be without food and water? We just simply wouldn't be here. The incredible thing is that when we're grateful for food and water, it doesn't just affect 
our life. The gratitude also impacts the world supply. If enough people felt gratitude for food and water, it would actually help the people who are starving and in great need. By the law of attraction and Newton's law of action and reaction, so Newton is the, um, the scientist who created the three laws of energy, input equals output, um, like attracts like, and what's the other one? I'll get, I'll get, I will get back to it. So action and reaction. Yeah, what you put in is what you get out. Oh, for every equal action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The, so the action of mass gratitude must produce an equal mass reaction, which would change the circumstances of scarcity of food and water for everyone on the planet. In addition, your gratitude for food and water keeps the magic continuing in your life and it will leave its glorious garden. It, it will leave, sorry. In addition, your gratitude for food and water keeps the magic continuing in your life and it will weave its glorious golden thread through everything that is dear to you, everything that you love and everything that you're dreaming of. I guess I'm not going to read this whole chapter. But what she's basically trying to say is that there's so much to be grateful for every day that we would never really necessarily think to say thank you for our food anymore or for our water. Um, so she's urging us before we eat or drink anything today, whether you're about to eat a meal, a piece of fruit or a snack or have a drink or anything, take a moment to look at what you're about to eat or drink and in your mind or out loud say the magic words, thank you. And if you can, just take one mouthful, really savoring it. It will not only increase your enjoyment, it will help you to feel far more grateful. You can also try something I do, which helps me to feel even more gratitude. When I say the magic words, I wave my fingers over my food or drink as if I'm sprinkling them with magic dust. And I imagine that the magic dust instantly purifies everything it touches. If at any time during the day you forget to say the magic words thank you before you eat or drink, as soon as you remember, close your eyes, go back to that moment and imagine yourself uh, doing this action. <sighs> okay. Our dreams do depend on the gratitude that we built in our daily life. So being grateful for the simple things in life like food and water is one of the deepest expressions of gratitude. And when you feel that degree of gratitude, you will see the magic happen. So magic practice number eight for today, we're going to count our blessings. We're going to make a list of 10 blessings. We're going to write out why we're grateful for that each of those blessings. And then we're going to reread our list. And at the end of each blessing, we're going to say thank you, thank you, thank you to anchor it in and feel as grateful for that blessing as much as we can. So I am so thankful for you, my viewers, today and everyone that has helped me to get to this point um, of creating this 21 day program because it has been, not only was it a great reminder of how I got to where I am today, but also um, redoing it all over again and holding me accountable for these simple but really great exercises. And like even like today, I was so tired after work and I went to the gym and then I had dinner and I just wanna take a nap, but no, it's so nice to yeah like it's like I'm held accountable for doing this and you're helping me um continue to raise my vibration and continue to like increase my gratitude and my self-love so yeah thank you thank you thank you and for all your beautiful comments and your encouragement it means everything to me you have no idea so thank you thank you thank you it gives me it gives your watering me to continue to grow in this YouTube garden, to be honest. So thank you. Um, and then again, this exercise that before we eat or drink anything today, we're going to take a moment to look at it and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's too bad. I already had my dinner, but I'm going to envision just me eating that chicken mm, and that salad. So delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then before we go to bed tonight, we're going to take our magic rock in our hand. Oh, my magic rock is by my bed. It's not here. And we're going to try to find the best thing that happened to us in the day. So then we're forced to shift through our day and only think of the good things that happened because more often than not, 
at least I know for myself, I want to ruminate about the things that didn't go well or that I did wrong or I could have done different. I want to, yeah, like criticize myself and basically just har harbor and like, is that the right word? Harbor? Harbor? In the... Um, the non-joyful parts of the day, but gratitude is a great way to get us out of that and set us into the best um, tone to go into a grateful sleep, have grateful dreams, and wake up in a more grateful state. So that's it for our gratitude practice today. We're going to jump right into mirror work with our affirmation queen, Louise Hay. Mirror work is all about cultivating self-love because love truly is the answer to everything. When in doubt, just love yourself. If you screw up, love yourself. When you do really well, love yourself. When, yeah, when anything, when you feel sad, love yourself. Just love is always the answer. So we're going to start day eight of our loving ourselves and our inner child because essentially when we do um, anxious attachment style healing we're basically healing that inner child that wasn't able to cultivate a sense of safety within itself because it did not receive the four s's as a child to be safe to be seen to be secure and to be soothed therefore it developed um, a negative self-view and an anxious attachment style in order to cope with what was happening and make sense of the situation that was taking place because as we now know, children will not think and feel that, oh, my parents are incapable of giving me love because of what they were going through, what they went through in their life. They internalize it as if there has to be something wrong with me. And that's when all the unhelpful core beliefs start. Like I'm not worthy of love. I'm bound to be rejected. I'm bound to be alone. I am defective. Um, I'm incompetent and all these other uh, terrible Terrible ways of thinking and feeling about ourselves, but this is how we reprogram our mind is through mirror work by Louise Hay. Okay, so here we go. Day eight. Ooh, I got goosebumps. Loving your inner child, part one. Today you look beyond the adult you see in the mirror and you meet your inner child. That is very important day in your mirror work, or this is a very important day in your mirror work. Honestly, inner child work really is, it's kind of make me cry again because every time I think about my inner child, I go back to the times that I was like five and six and seven. And like, I just remember how I felt about myself because I wasn't understanding why I was always so criticized and getting in so much trouble. So she says, Louise, hey, take my hand and let's walk over to your mirror. You're gonna look deeply into your eyes Look beyond the adult that you see in your mirror and greet your inner child. That actually does make me a little bit nervous, but it's okay. We're here. We're doing it all together. So it doesn't matter how old you are. There is a little child within you who needs love and acceptance. If you are a woman, no matter how self-reliant you are, you have a little girl inside who is very tender and needs help. If you are a man, no matter how self-confident you are, you have a little boy inside of you who craves warmth and affection. When you look in the mirror, do you see your inner child? Is this child happy? What is this child trying to tell you? I had to take a minute here to compose myself. So I am... Um, Returning back to this very important chapter of um, loving our inner child and doing inner child healing and healing our inner child is so, so, so important. And I remember watching an episode um, of Oprah Winfrey where she brought in this doctor and I can actually, I'll find the episode and put it in the description box because I know I found it on YouTube or I guess it found me and I was watching it and this doctor led the entire audience into a meditation. So he had everyone close their eyes and got them into a meditative state. And he had them all picture the house that would first come to mind of their childhood. And they would go to that house now as adults, they're picturing themselves as adults walking towards that house and he had them 
either open a door or um, peer through a window and see if they can find their little self and see what they're doing, how they're feeling, how they're acting. And I remember I was actually doing this exercise along with um, the audience on YouTube and it was actually quite powerful. I know exactly what moment um, my childhood memory brought me to, to my inner child and like the curtains that I was peeking through and like looking at myself and like, it just makes me so sad when I think about like how uh, I was. Um, so this is gonna be maybe a quite an emotional little um, uh, day for us, especially if our younger child, our inner child um, went through um, a lot. So just stay with it if you can. And um, yeah, we're gonna start off and she actually, Louise Hay, she asks, she asks the question, when you look in the mirror, right? So we're gonna have our mirror or you, or you can actually even just picture yourself looking through um, the window of your childhood home that comes to mind. Do you see your inner child? Um, is your child happy? What is this child trying to tell you? Like, I know very well what my inner child tries to tell me all the time. And it's usually like, why am I not worthy of love? Like, why can't anyone love me? So... I don't think I predominantly run on that anymore, but like things like this totally help. So I'd love to hear what it is that you're thinking and feeling about your inner child when you do this exercise. Um, and then Louise Hay goes on to remind us that every age you have been is within you, in your consciousness and your memory. As a child, when something went wrong, you tended to believe that there was something wrong with you. Children develop the idea that if only they could do everything right, then that their parents would love them and they wouldn't punish them. Once we turn off or tune out around the age of five, or often we turn off or tune out around the age of five, we've made that decision because we think there is something wrong with us and we're not going to have anything to do with this child anymore. There is a parent inside of us as well. And for most of us, this inner parent is scolding the inner child almost nonstop. If you listen to your inner dialogue, you can hear the scolding. You can hear the parent tell you what you're doing wrong or that you are not good enough. So way back in childhood, we kind of war with ourselves and started criticizing ourselves the way our parents criticized us. You're stupid. You're not good enough. You can't do anything right. This constant criticism became a habit. Now as adults, most of us either totally ignore the child within us or belittle the child in the same way we were belittled in the past. We repeat this pattern over and over. Every time you feel scared, realize that it is the child within you who is scared. The adult isn't afraid, yet it has disconnected and isn't there for the child. The adult and the child need to develop a relationship with each other. So how do we connect with our inner child? The first step is getting to know the child through your mirror work. Who is this child? Why is this child unhappy? What can you do to help this child feel safe and secure and loved? Talk to your inner child about everything you do. I know it may sound silly, but it works. Let your inner child know that no matter what happens, you will never turn away from it or leave it, but always be there for it and love it. All your inner child really wants is to be noticed, to feel safe, and to be loved. If you can take just a few moments a day to begin to connect with the little person inside of you, life is going to be a lot better. And let's affirm, I am willing to love and accept my inner child. And then you can even picture yourself giving your little self a hug. And like you promise, you can see yourself holding your little person and say, I, ha I have you. I won't abandon you. I won't let you go. I love you. I'm here for you. You don't have to be afraid anymore. I got you. You are safe. 
<sighs> you are safe and I love you. Okay, so we're going to do our mirror work exercise now for day eight. Ooh, I remember doing this one. This is a tough one. You're going to find a photo of yourself when you were about five years old. And you're going to tape that photo to your bathroom mirror. You're going to look at it for a few minutes. And then what do you see? Do you see a child? Do you see a happy one? Or is it a miserable child? Is it an unhappy child? Talk to your inner child in the mirror. You can look at the photo or even look into your own eyes, whichever feels more comfortable for you. If you have had a nickname as a child, use this name as you speak to your inner child. What works really well is to sit in front of the mirror because if you are standing, as soon as, soon as difficult feelings start to come up, you might be tempted to run out the door. So sit down, grab a box of tissues and start talking. Open your heart and share your innermost thoughts. I would really love to hear what you have to say about this exercise. I totally forgot how powerful it is. When you are finished, say these affirmations. I love you, dear one. I am here for you. You are safe. Whew. Okay. There is a journaling exercise here. I don't remember doing this, but if you wanted to, she urges us to take uh, crayons, colored pencils, or um, anything, or or colorful pens, and using our non-dominant hands, we're gonna draw a picture of ourselves as a child, and she urges us to be as creative as possible, and she wants us to tape this drawing of ourselves to our bathroom mirror. And then she wants us to look at the picture and begin talking to our inner child and ask questions. What do you like? What do you dislike? What frightens you? What do you need? What can I do to make you happy? So I know what my answers to these questions are. And like, I know what frightened me would be like abandoning me, like leaving me behind. And what do I, what did, what did I need? I just needed to be loved, like hugged and like, yeah, just loved. So we're going to close our eyes and take a few minutes to reflect on what you learned about your inner child. And when I first did this, I learned that my inner child was like literally starving for love and acceptance. And like, it's no wonder I spent like 40 years of my life doing cartwheels backwards and 10 times over trying to please people in order to be loved but that doesn't work true love starts from within and then all you have to do is one cartwheel or even no cartwheels you don't need to do cartwheels for anyone to love you if you love yourself people will just love you but then because you love yourself you want to give naturally to people like we're no longer going to be giving because we want to be receiving or we're so desperate to be loved back so if you're ready, we're going to do our meditation for um, the day, or at least for right now, because I also urge you to do the meditation by Corey T called Safety in Relationships that I also put in the description box when you go to bed at night after you do your gratitude with your magic rock. If you can just put that on and set yourself up for even a better sleep, what's better than feeling grateful and safe while you're going to sleep to reprogram that subconscious mind that runs 95% of our system automatically without us knowing. So we're going to take care of our inner child today. We're going to sit upright or we're going to lie down. We're going to have our back straight so we have our seven chakra energy points lined up. We're going to focus on the heart chakra, which is the color green. We're going to picture that our inner child is living in there with us. And you can put hand on your heart or your hands on your knees and you have them facing upright. And you're going to take your three deep breaths, just like I have guided you before. Your inhale is going to be a little bit shorter than your exhale. And imagine breathing in love and exhaling Anything that is not serving you or feels icky or yucky or any memories of your childhood that you want to get rid of, 
So you're going to be breathing in love. And breathing out anything that is unhelpful, any thoughts, anything, any, any images, emotions, tears, release it all. We're releasing it all. And one more time, breathing in. And exhaling out everything and anything that's not serving. Deep from your diaphragm, exhale it all out. And you're going to keep your eyes closed and I'm going to open mine so I can keep reading this beautiful meditation. So again, as a reminder, we're taking care of our inner child today. It is a child who is frightened. It is a child who is hurting. It is a child who does not know what to do. Be there for your child. Embrace it and love it and do whatever you can to take care of its needs. Be sure to let your child know that no matter what happens, you will always be there for it. You will never turn away or desert it. You will always love this child. Now let your attention move to your toes and allow them to go completely limb. Relax your insteps and your heels and your ankles. Let your feet become heavy. Allow this relaxation to move up your calves and into your knees. Continue to move this warmth and relaxation into your thighs, feeling them become heavier. Now let your hips and your buttocks relax. Allow your waistline to release and then feel the peacefulness move up to your chest, expanding through your collarbone and into your shoulders. Allow your upper arms to let go. Let your elbows relax. Let your lower arms and your wrists and your hands relax. Let the last of the tension move out through your fingertips. Let your neck relax and then your jaw and your cheeks and all the muscles around your eyes. Let your forehead and scalp relax. Let go, let go and just relax. Imagine yourself and your inner child just there together, relaxing together, loving each other together, hugging each other together, crying together, whatever it is that you need to do together, just give yourself the time and space. And remember that you are always going to be there for your inner child and you are never going to abandon it. So it has no concerns anymore. It does never have to worry about being left behind or left on its own and so it is thank you so much for joining me on this very powerful um, day one of week two of healing our inner child if you're not ready to open up your eyes that's totally okay i totally get it if i wasn't on screen i would probably be yeah be crying a little more right now and um yeah wanting to close my eyes maybe even fall asleep because um this is heavy work you guys like releasing intergenerational and patterns and old beliefs takes a lot of um takes a lot of work and our body produces only so much um energy so but it's so much better to be using our energy that we make towards healing as opposed to doing, using that energy that we make to be always into our uh, sympathetic nervous system where we have to like be anxious and into our fight or flight mode and or like ruminating or worrying or so we might as well just use that energy to do healing and be peaceful and grateful and self-loving and again I'm so grateful for you I'm gonna see you tomorrow for uh, day nine and 
if you liked anything about the video i would love it if you gave it a thumbs up if you feel called to donate to the channel there is a link in my description box um any comments concerns i'm just so grateful for everything and anything and yes if you haven't subscribed already i would love for you to do so and if you have any other ideas for any other programs that you want me to do or any topics that you want me to talk about i always welcome the ideas and i actually encourage and love them and i love you and i will see you tomorrow